All right, I'm right back. And I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I am not automatically pro GMO. I am just anti stupidity, anti reactionary when it comes to science. You need evidence, you need data, you need to do your homework, you need to gather data, you need to make decisions based on the truth. And the truth is that everything we have gathered for decades shows that GMOs used properly are safe. And there are some examples that might not be good ideas and we shouldn't do them. But that's not an excuse to ban or demonize the techniques. Techniques aren't the problem. So, I've talked about wild species, weedy species. This is actually a type of lettuce. Doesn't look like lettuce. It's kind of got little prickly spines on the underside ribs of the leaves. Um, tastes more bitter than anything you probably ever put in your mouth. It's horrible. But we use it for disease resistance in breeding lettuce. I've used uh, something very similar to this. We use embryo rescue technique when we breed something that can't genetically function on its own without rescuing the plant embryo so we can get it to the next generation of seed to survive that initial plant breeding effort. We need to grow something in the lab using special hormones and chemicals in order to get it to survive. We call that embryo rescue. We do it all the time. Is that a GMO? No. Is it something you can do in organic? Yeah. Um, or at least, let me back up. It's something you can do in the development of seeds that will eventually be used in it. You don't do embryo rescue immediately before the farmer gets their seed. Um, so I don't want any confusion there. I have already talked about intentional mutation with x-rays carcinogens. Um, what about inducing polyploidy? We all have two copies of our chromosomes. We get one set of chromosomes from mom, one set of chromosomes from dad, and that makes us. Plants are very much the same way, but they might get multiple. They might get three sets from mom and three sets from dad to get six in total, uh, called hexaploid. Um, and there's different levels of ploidy or multiple copies from each parent. And so, for example, wheat, all of the wheat we take for granted, including everything that is grown, virtually everything that is grown for organic wheat, is all stuff that was treated back in the day to increase ploidy, because the increased ploidy gives a higher quality grain for bread making. Is that something that could have had unintentional consequences and all kinds of other unknown effects? And did it involve strange uh, manipulation of those plants that were unnatural? Damn right it did. And we take it for granted. Nobody cares about those things. They only care about complaining about what we're doing now as, as somehow all of these things um, here. Yeah, whatever, they, they do that, they did that, who cares? But it's the GMO one. That's the one because I keep reading about it because Whole Foods doesn't want it. Therefore, they must be right. It's marketing, it's not about science, it's about marketing. Um, so we use a lot of different techniques in biotechnology. GMOs are one subset. Biotechnology is a whole bunch of tools used in pharmaceutical production, disease treatments, genetic disorders, cloning, uh, GMO crops, and on and on and on. There's a ton of things. And for whatever reason, we've singled out one thing, GMOs. Why? 
Well, again, I would argue that some of the organizations that are pushing GMO fear have done a really good job of selling that fear. And it's good to pull in not only membership and the membership dues and donations that raises the, the profile of this organization, whatever it is, and gets them money, gets them political power, gets them to speak in Congress or at your state's legislators and lobby for their own interests. It's about money. It's not about the truth. Um, why just GMOs? Why is everything else on this list wonderful and promoted, but GMOs are somehow evil? You need an evil to fight. You need something to rally the masses to fear. And if they fear something, they feel compelled to donate, to do something. And so GMOs have been singled out of biotechnology tools as a way for profit. Companies like Whole Foods use it for their marketing. And I'm not a big fan of that. And, and I'm a big fan of organic produce. I am. I, I totally am a fan of organic produce. I think it pushes the industry in the right direction. Unfortunately, a lot of the truth about the organic industry is hidden behind marketing gimmicks. When I was when I was still in um, the later stages of uh, my schooling and uh, the whole idea of organics was still not legally defined, uh, we're talking late 80s, early 90s, and organic really meant nothing. It still just meant it contains carbon. <laughs> But some people were using it for marketing and a lot of people were pissed off because they're using it to market food in a way that didn't mean anything. And so the US government finally got in and said, we gotta define this. And so there were hearings in San Francisco and other places around the country. And I went to several of those meetings to talk about what is organic? What should it mean? What should the legal definition be? And I still was the, you know, pie in the sky, uh, hippie gonna change the world and wanted things to use less chemicals and, and become more organic. And these new genetic techniques that were um, just getting into our food supply called G GMOs, um, we're going to help save the planet because we can reduce the need for pesticides because we can develop plants that are genetically resistant without having to spray chemicals. So GMOs is a good thing. And a lot of people were pushing for it. And unfortunately, um, there were all kinds of what I would call political interest groups that wanted to get their voices heard. And they wanted the word organic to mean free trade, no child labor law, no GMOs, um, no chemical use, and, and there was just this long list of things that everybody wanted to tag on to the word organic. And organic became about inputs. What do you put into your crop? And so that's chemical inputs and fertilizer inputs. So it doesn't mean you don't use chemicals in organic farming. It just means you can only use those things on the organic list. Um, and one of the things they defined as an input was GMOs. It's like, how the hell? That doesn't make sense. It's not an input. There is no such thing as a GMO. A GMO is a set of techniques that can either put a piece of DNA in, doesn't tell you which one, or it can take a piece of DNA out or it can somehow tweak a piece of DNA. It's not a product. So it made no sense to me. And I was, I was floored at the lack of science and the lack of understanding of not only chemicals in all of these discussions and a lot of the lack of science knowledge of GMOs in general. It was sad to watch actually.
And unfortunately, the organic community um, at that time, and please don't be offended for me being this blunt, but I think there were a lot of really stupid hippie minds that didn't have a clue what they were talking about. And the organic industry has grown up quite a bit since the late 80s and early 90s. And there's a lot of great scientists, great information out there. But a lot of that anti-science mentality still hangs out that, you know, it's not about data. Just if it's new, it's bad. If it's different, it's bad. Um, and, and I have no tolerance, no patience for that kind of mentality. And it's gaining traction in our current world, unfortunately. So GMOs are just one small subset of biotechnology. They are being singled out, as I've already mentioned, um, and they're being singled out based on certain fears. We're gonna get pharmaceuticals in our food because nobody can keep them separate. Again, that's a total misunderstanding of how the process works. We're not gonna accidentally get grandma's heart medicine in our corn that we're eating at the dinner table. And we're gonna mix genes from different species playing God. Well, guess what? You already have genes in your body from insects and bacteria and all kinds of things over the millennia. Our, our DNA not only is the same as many other organisms, but through various natural techniques have already mixed up. We've got genes from all kinds of things hanging out in our bodies that are now a normal part, a stable part of our own chromosomes. And so the idea that we're doing something that you don't understand is not a good argument, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to get pesticides in our food. That one really cracks me up because um, let me use the example of wine. Wine has these wonderful things called phenolics. And phenolics give beautiful color and flavor to a red wine. We want them. We breed for them. We cherish them. We measure and optimize them in our wine. What are they for the plant? From the plant's point of view, they're pesticides and sunblock and other chemicals that are helping them to survive. They are antagonist to insects and bacteria and fungi. And so they are, by all definition, pesticides. What if I do traditional breeding and I breed one wild species with one of my crops? So I have a tomato plant with some wild tomato and I breed in some disease resistance. That disease resistance may be a chemical from a gene that I brought in. What would that mean that chemical from that gene is? A pesticide. It's just not some of the pesticides. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some really nasty chemicals, really nasty pesticides that I wouldn't want to stick in my mouth. But unfortunately, the word pesticide is used in a way to promote fear. And it's unfortunate. It, the word pesticide is is used in a way that shows a lack of knowledge. There are pesticides that are flavor enhancers to your wine, and there are pesticides that will kill you. So when you use the word pesticide, it's too simplistic, too much of dumbing down. Every chemical has to be looked at individually. Is this a dangerous chemical or helpful? Is it uh, dangerous in large quantities or small quantities? I can kill you with anything, given enough of it. We need water. I give you too much, you die. So again, you have to look at things with an open mind and understand what are the risks, what are the dangers, what are the benefits? And a lot of the arguments I've heard against GMOs that there are pesticides in our food is largely a bunch of baloney. There are some cases where you could put something into the food to make it more resistant. That wouldn't be a good idea. I wouldn't support that kind of an idea for a GMO. Another fear, we're contaminating crops. 
and this is another one, I, I just have to laugh at it. We have been making modified genetics through crossbreeding and hybrids and mixing up genes, mixing up chromosomes, um, mutating things either in, on purpose or by accident through the generations. And those things that we are doing, if the crop is wind pollinated, it will spread to indigenous crops in rural areas, in other countries. It's hard to keep that from happening, but we can, we can do a lot to minimize or reduce or control that now that we understand it. And that's been going on for generations. What has happened? What's new? The only thing is new is somebody has arbitrarily labeled some things GMOs without any concern about what product we're talking about. If there is a GMO and a wind pollinated crop that is somehow dangerous to be in the environment, you don't do it. You shouldn't do it. It should be outlawed, period. I, I am totally in support of very aggressive, strict regulation controlling what you can and can't do with GMOs. What I'm not in support of is just saying the technique is somehow outlawed because we're too scared and too lazy to learn about it. So contaminating crops, that's been going on for hundreds of years. You gotta be more specific. What gene are you concerned about? What is a contaminant that is a problem? If there's a gene that could be a problem contaminant, don't put it out in the environment. And the biggest laugh of all, political power and capitalistic corruption. Um, the idea that GMOs are somehow going to allow governments and the wealthy to control crops in a way that will uh, be able to dominate the world and control the world through food. To which I would say, wake up, read your history books, understand what's going on. Uh, controlling a population through food has been done since the beginning of human civilization. There is nothing new. GMOs is not new and it doesn't give any new power to political governments to use food as a weapon, a political weapon and, and corruption. GMOs doesn't change anything. You just tell people that there is this evil uh, corporate or capitalistic structure, this evil government structure that is going to manipulate the world through manipulation of the food supply and people go, ooh, that's bad. Well, yeah, that is bad. And then you somehow slip in GMO into that conversation as though it's relevant and people think, ooh, they're doing that now because of GMOs. GMOs are allowing these things to happen. They're not. GMOs didn't change anything. Food has been a weapon always. And it always will be as long as we have a society like we live in. It, food is a major political weapon. Always has been, always will be. Tying GMOs to it is the most absurdly stupid argument I have ever heard. There is nothing that forces you to grow a GMO. Anyway, so those are some of the fears and every one of them doesn't hold any water when you look at it. Or if it does hold water, it's things that can and should be controlled through regulation and through knowledge and science, not sticking our heads in the sand and saying, I don't want to learn that. Are these foods safe for my kids? As though this is some sort of science experiment. 
we have no clue what we're putting out into the food supply with these GMOs. We're just making crap up in the lab and putting it out there and seeing who dies. Seeing if, you know, our kids are developing fish scales. It's silly. These things have been thoroughly researched. They are very thoroughly regulated. There may be holes in the regulation that maybe should be looked at and fixed. But for the most part, the regulations are tighter for GMOs than anything else in our food supply. And we've got decades of history and not a single example of something that is bad. Are they safe for the environment? Again, here's one where I can come up with some ideas. That's probably not a good idea. Um, will there be someday something that somebody does with a GMO that was a bad idea that ends up being an environmental problem, it's inevitable. It's inevitable as the sun shall rise. It's just, when will it happen? How are we gonna control that? Not by stopping because other countries are gonna keep going. We control that by learning and regulating and making sure we understand what the risks are and how we can keep things uh, best under control. We need to be in charge of our own food supply. We need to be in charge of our own destiny. And the only way to do that is through knowledge. Um, and I think through a large number of things, through genetically modified organisms, we're cleaning up toxic waste sites using genetically modified plants. We're feeding people on ground that previously would not have been able to produce uh, adequate food supplies. We're doing all kinds of things that are benefits not everything is going to be a win. That doesn't mean you stop everything. Wow, somebody was in a car accident. We better ban all cars. That's silly. Should there be good regulations, traffic rules, car safety guidelines for manufacturers, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Should we look at those periodically and update them and improve them? Absolutely. Do we stop? cars because something bad can happen? No. Uh, do we really know what we're doing? Again, the fear of perpetuating that scientists are just closing their eyes and randomly doing things with GMOs and seeing what happens. And that's what happens, the, the closing your eyes and randomly doing things, that's kind of what happens with the mutagenesis and with some of the other techniques that are not controlled under GMOs. And to a larger extent, that's what happens with plant breeding. You don't know what the hell's gonna happen. I was a plant breeder for years. And you cross things and go, I wonder what's gonna happen with this cross. Well, that didn't work. Oh, that worked. And even after it worked, if you like something, you really don't know what's going on down in the deep, dark recesses of the genes of that plant you just made especially if it's from a wild cross. You don't know what the hell's in there. Is anybody forcing me to look at every single one of the 10,000 genes I brought in from the other plant? Nope. Is there any regulation on that? Nope. Gamble all you want and just throw it out in the market and hope that you didn't bring in something that killed somebody. Am I worried about that? No, I don't think there needs to be a regulation because the risk is really small. in a properly thought out and researched GMO, the risk is at least as small, if not smaller, in my opinion. Uh, some other fears, allergens may be created. We know about allergies, we know about allergens. I don't think that is something that is a big deal. We can monitor for those. Um, what bothers me about this argument is that, um, the chances of randomly creating a, a GMO allergen statistically is way lower than through traditional plant breeding. But nobody talks about allergens accidentally coming from wild species. Nobody talks about that. Somehow allergens, which are much less likely in GMOs, are now a problem. Why? Antibiotic resistant bacteria may form in our stomachs. This is an old one. The, the research on GMOs back in the 80s used these antibiotic resistant genes. 
And that was early research to learn about them. And I won't go into the details, but that's ancient history. No antibiotics go into your plants, period. Never have for, for the food supply in a way. In, in laboratories, people have messed around with it, but that's not the way things are done anymore. It was done in early examples of GMO testing and learning, and it was never part of the food supply, yet people still to this day, 30, 40 years later, are claiming that somehow this is a problem. It's not organic, to which I just have to you know, cry a little bit. Why not? It's a way we can reduce pesticide use. It's a way we can increase food production on salty soils. It's the way we can stop blindness for children in poor parts of Southeast Asia. It does all of the things, or I shouldn't say it does all the things. It has the potential to be used as a tool for all of these different problems that I think all of the organic community wants to solve, help the environment, help people. And so we've taken it out of organic because of some blind fight. Why did we take away that tool when we could use it to our benefit? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. And to this day, I'm still pissed off at the organic community of the 19 early 1990s, late 1980s for taking GMOs and throwing it into the same category as uh, co uh, conventional synthetic pesticides. When a GMO is not an actual product, it's a technique. Um, economic control of a crop, again, that's, I've already, written that one off, that's um, absurd in my opinion. Countries will always have the ability and large uh, wealthy countries especially will always have the uh, capability of using food as a weapon. And GMO doesn't give them any more or less power. Patenting genetic codes. Now that's one where I'm gonna stand on the sides of the anti-GMO crowd for a moment. Um, I don't think people should own a gene just because uh, they found it. And there's, I think we need to reinvestigate that one from a legal standpoint. I do believe if a researcher spent eight years studying a gene and getting it into a crop, they need some time under patent laws to be able to take advantage of that law or of that research that they did in the breeding developing the new variety. Um, but it's gone to the point where if a company can run some DNA testing over the weekend, because DNA testing is so sophisticated now, you know, seven years of research that I did in the 1990s could be done literally in a week with the techniques we have today. Seven years done in a week. Now, what couldn't be done in a week is all the confirmation and the growing of the crops and measuring. I, they still have to grow it out in the field and measure and see what's happening. But all of the genetic parts, quick, easy, no problem. And so you can find a new gene, sequence it, catalog some interesting new organism, and then patent it just because you found it. I don't agree with that. And I think some corporations have gone way too far. Uh, and we shouldn't patent nature, not in that way. You should patent your work, your inventions, not owning nature. Uh, lawsuits for accidental pollinations, I get into that one a little more in my um, laws and regulations class, but for this class, I'll just say that, again, the law has to catch up a little bit. It, it's challenging when, some things happen and accidentally pollen travels on the wind and lands in your crop. And now you've got some GMO gene in your crop by accident. Now, the, the most famous cases that claim that, I, I claim that's a bunch of hooey. Um, the most famous cases were some uh, farmers that went to Monsanto and said, 
neener, neener, I stole your crop. What can you do about it? And Monsanto squished him like a bug in court. Uh, and I think they deserved it. They were arrogant and they stole something that wasn't theirs. Um, not to say I'm a fan of Monsanto's legal team. I'm not. I think Monsanto has done a lot to give a black eye to the ag industry uh, because of their kind of cold-blooded tactics and uh, legal strategies. But some innocent people have been caught up in it, even though the most famous ones that are on some very well played documentaries that are anti-GMO. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but a lot of bad science and bad publicity. Oh, these poor farmers were being uh, beaten up because of no, no effort on their own. Um, and that's not what really happened. People were trying to say, Monsanto, you can't you can't come after me for accidentally getting a hold of your crop when they didn't accidentally do it. Anyway, environmental disasters, not going to go into that one either. What are the realities of GMOs? And let me take another quick break. <laughs> 